What if you could have a personal assistant in your second brain that could show you any information you needed from the internet or from your notes? In this video, you'll learn how to use ChatGPT from inside Obsidian for free, have a chatbot to search anything from your notes, and lastly, get suggested smart connections to related ideas in your notes. This is the first video of a three-part series on how I use AI in my second brain. In the second video, I'll share the prompts and workflows I use to integrate these AI tools into the entire personal knowledge management process. And in the third video, I'll share a real-life start-to-finish process of me using it. Everything I talk about in this video will be available and ready to use in my Ultimate Starter Vault, which you can learn more about in the description. Without any further ado, Let's level up our second brain. Let's start with the basics and create a window to access ChatGPT from within Obsidian. To do so, we'll need to download the Custom Frames Community plugin, a plugin that lets you embed any website into Obsidian. So we can head to Settings, Community Plugins, Browse, and then search up Custom Frames, Install, and enable the plugin. It does require a reload of the app, so we can just open the command palette and type in reload. Also going to make the UI a bit bigger. Now if we go to custom frames, we can create any frame we want for any website we want to add into Obsidian. So for now, we'll just create a new custom frame. And in the settings, we'll change the name to ChatGPT. We'll change the icon to bot. You can, if you want a custom icon, you can just search on this website for one. I typed in robot and it showed up with this one, which I'm going to use. And next is a URL. I actually have this memorized off the top of my head, chat.openai.com. There are some more settings you can modify, like if you wanted to add it on the ribbon icon bar here. But yeah, that's all I'm going to do for now. So I'm going to hide the settings, go back, and then try to search it up. Right now, it still isn't loaded into the vault, so we just need to restart it one more time. And now if we open up Command Palette and search up ChatGPT, we can now see it here, Custom Frames Open ChatGPT. So if I click on it, it shows up on the sidebar here. You will need to log in to open AI, but I already have, so there was no need for me to do so. If you have ChatGPT+, Plus, you can now switch between 3.5 or GPT-4. You can even use the plugins. If you feel like this window is too small, you can always move this over or you can just add it as a tab in your note workspace, just like so. For now, I'll keep it split here just so you can see it better, but usually I keep it on the sidebar. So now that we have it set up, we can just start using it. For example, now I can use it to summarize an input note I have. I can just go to my notes on how to take smart notes collapse both headers that contain all of my notes and highlights and I can just add an initial prompt saying please summarize the main ideas of the book in 500 words or less and this ends up actually taking each of the headers I had in my highlights and writing a little summary for it so now I can actually just turn some of these headers into notes themselves and there's just so many ways you could use ChatGPT for your notes. So then I could just copy this entire summary, create a new header, and just paste it in there. I can also ask it to reduce it to even less words. Can you please reduce summary to 100 words? This one is a bit long, so I'm going to get rid of it. One thing to note is that when you try to click any buttons that say like copy this, the copying will stay only on the browser that it's embedded in, so you'll have to manually paste whatever you copied. So yeah, now we can pull from the internet as our data source, but now it's time for us to learn how we can enhance our Obsidian Vault notes themselves. For the more personal AI features in our second brain, we're going to need another plugin called Smart Connections. So I'm just going to go back to the Community Plugins page and search for it right here. Install and enable. This one will cost you money to run since we are using our own API key. So to actually get it to work, it's not like ChatGPT where you can just use it for free. So 
So if I just go back here and go to Smart Connection Settings, we need to get our own API key, and we can just do so by going to this website right here, platform.openai.com slash account slash API dash keys. As you can see, I have lots of other keys I'm using for different things, but we can just create a new one by clicking on this button. I'm just gonna name it Smart Connections Test, and then we can create the key. Create a copy and finish it and paste it into the settings. We can test to make sure it works by clicking on test API key, which it says it's valid, so we should be good. Aside from that, two new panes show up in our sidebar, one for chatting and one for files. But first, I'm gonna talk about files. So over here on the right, you might get this error where it says embeddings files not found. So what you need to do is just click on create embeddings JSON and let it load for a little bit. So if I just click create embeddings, there we go. Once it's all loaded, you should be able to see a screen similar to this. If you're curious about pricing in my own vault that I just started recently, it cost me around 17 cents US to upload 460 notes with 160,000 words in them, which I think is really cheap. Just a heads up, all the data in your vault will be sent to OpenAI, so if you care a lot about your privacy, I would just stick to using ChatGPT to actually choose what you want sent to them. But I personally don't mind having my data mixed in with millions of other people's for the sake of efficiency, so I'm willing to take the risk. Before I show you any features, I'm just going to explain a bit on how this plugin actually works so you can use it to your advantage. First, all the nodes in your vault get broken up into different blocks based on their headings. So if we go back to this note on how to take smart notes, this header would be a block, this header would be a block, but then this entire header, since it's a level one header, would also be a block. So because of this, it's important to use your headers effectively to section off your notes. The content of the header is also used in the calculation so be sure to keep your headers descriptive as well. Next, to determine the relevance of each block, each one gets sent to OpenAI, which then generates an embedding for that particular block. Embeddings are a set of values that describe its characteristics across different dimensions. In this case, it's around 1,566 dimensions. So then once all the embeddings are calculated, they all get stored into a hidden file in your Obsidian Vault, which we can just access by going to the root folder of the System Explorer and finding this note called Smart Connections. So when you're asking the app to find similar connections to a certain note, it will first get the value of all the dimensions of that specific note, and then go through all the other values of all the other blocks in your vault to see which ones are most related. It's like plotting all your notes on an XY graph, and then trying to see which ones it's closest to. But instead of just two dimensions, it's 1,536. This is really powerful since it can find similarities in dimensions that we might not even be consciously thinking of, allowing for even crazier connections. So yeah, based on that explanation, the quality of these connections it finds is still based on how well your notes are organized. So by keeping your notes organized via atomic concept notes and highly comprehensive writing, it will enhance the power of the plugin. This is under the Smart Connections Files pane, which is the one that shows you, well, the Smart Connection. For each related block, it will show a percentage on how relevant it is. Unfortunately, some of these connections can be very obvious since my application note on how to take smart notes will obviously be relevant to the book, but if you look, it also has a link to building a second brain and the Zettelkasten concept note I have. It'll also show the contents of the note inside, but it's a little bit narrow here, so it might be better to switch it and split it. Yeah, this looks much nicer. But the best part about all of this is that you aren't just limited to finding what's related to a certain note. You can literally just ask it questions or whatever text you choose. If we go back to the top, there's a search icon right here, which we can use to type something we want to find related ideas for. So we can type how to use a Zettelkasten. And similar to how the process works, this text itself will get its own embedding and it'll find all the notes with similar embeddings as well. I guess it makes sense that, you know, 
the note that is on Zettelkasten will have the most connections, but if we keep on going, we can find related headers that include Zettelkasten. It'll include parts of how to take smart notes since that talks about the Zettelkasten method. And it'll also mention times when Zettelkasten is linked. This one doesn't even have Zettelkasten included, but since we also had how to in the search, it was also looking for more actionable things we can do. And this will only be more powerful as you create more notes. If you wanted to make the search permanent because you really like the connections that it found here, you can just create an embedded code block to store the connections that it made. We can just add three backticks, add smart connections, and then we can paste the thing we use to search. Now if we exit, we can see all the connections here. This is useful if you want to keep a certain search query as well, since when we switch to a different node, it automatically switched to the connections related to that. If you want, we can also just make a note called how to use a Zettelkasten. Just remove everything, keep this in there. And I'm gonna drag it to my side folder. That is a bit too compact, so I'm gonna expand this a bit. Ta-da! So then you just keep this pinned on your sidebar as you start maybe exploring these different notes or just, you know, working on maybe like a blog post. So yeah, this is already massive on its own, but now we need to combine the two together to make our own personal assistant, just like ChatGPT, but for our own notes. And to do so, I'm just gonna move everything back. I'm gonna delete this. We can head to the Smart Connections chat pane, which will give us a chat box to ask questions to. We can also ask general questions, which will use the internet, just like ChatGPT, but I prefer to just use the ChatGPT embed since it saves me money. When we want it to answer based on the contents in our vault, we need to use a self-referential pronoun like I, me, my, or a plural one like we or our. So we can try that out. We could say, based on my notes, explain what a Zettelkasten is. That is a massive response. That's going to cost like almost a cent. <laughs> but this so was actually pretty accurate. And I'm pretty sure it just takes from different things like my Zettelkasten note. Out of curiosity, I'm just going to see where it got these notes from. So I'm going to copy a bit of it and then go to the search bar. Search by line. Nope, doesn't work. Search by content. Wow. So there's no exact match for necessarily this content. It literally just learns from the data in your vault and then synthesizes it into a response that best matches your question. You can then continue asking it more, but let's say you want to do it later so you can just save it by naming it learning what a Zettelkasten is. We can then create a new chat and ask something like, based on my notes, what is a second brain? We can also name this one learning about a second brain and then save it. Wow, much shorter, but very concise and accurate. Maybe I want to switch between the two chats and I can just click on this chat history button and jump between the different ones. I will just add a warning and say that the more messages in history there is in a conversation, the more words you'll have to send to open AI at a time since in the request it will include all the different messages and content, which means, you know, more money. <laughs> if you maybe want to customize what you want to be able to make connections to, you can go to settings and go to smart connections. And there's lots of settings here to determine what you want to exclude. Maybe I don't want to include any daily notes from this year. I can just do something like 2023. Or maybe for folder exclusions, I can just get rid of all my daily notes by adding my folder daily notes. And for path only, for this last one, header exclusions will just remove, will just prevent any headers from showing up in the smart connections. So let's say maybe in your daily note, daily template, you have a reminders note and you don't really care on if a 
a certain reminder from like two years ago is that relevant so you can just add the reminders tab i mean reminders heading in here the other settings aren't too important one thing i found cool though was being able to group the connections by file so if i turn that on and i go to how to take smart notes instead of having each block separated based on relevance it all gets grouped based on the total note content which i kind of prefer since it makes things less messy so yeah that was a lot to cover but i'm super excited to continue experimenting with these features in my vault next it's time to learn how to use these ai tools in your day-to-day -day life through prompts and workflows which you can learn more about in my next video on how i use ai for my second brain if you're watching this early and the video isn't up yet just be sure to like and subscribe to stay tuned you can keep up to date on any new things i learn on my weekly newsletter but yeah this has been john maverick stay mindful